Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, I don't often film from inside here. This is the roll-off roof observatory that I built um, about two years ago. It houses this telescope, which is a 200 millimeter F4 Newtonian. It's a Skywatcher Quattro 8S. And it's sitting here on this Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount, um, all of which is controlled and powered uh, through uh, a laptop that I've got sitting over there. Um, so I thought it'd be helpful to give an update on my thoughts using this observatory, the experience that I've had, uh, and then hopefully to answer a critical question at the end of this video. So <clears throat> overall, I would say I find deep sky imaging uh, immensely frustrating and really, really hard. Um, so most of you will know I enjoy spending time outside uh, under the night sky, out in the landscape, taking nightscape, landscape astrophotographs. Um, and I really enjoy the adventure of that. I enjoy going outside at night into you know, remote rural locations. Uh, I enjoy the solitude of it. I enjoy hearing the sounds of the wildlife. I enjoy um, just being out and having an adventure. And that adventure for me is a core part of what I do. The images that I create when I'm out in the landscape um, remind me of the adventures that I have. So for me, there's a real connection with those images and the story behind those images is in my view as important as the quality of the images themselves. <clears throat> I don't get the same feeling when I take deep sky photographs. So um, I would say I am at the lower end of the competency spectrum when it comes to taking night photographs. Um, I tend not to have the patience to uh, to process and edit those photographs perhaps as well as I uh, could do or should do. Um, perhaps I don't really have the patience to learn how to do that either. Uh, but even with the deep sky photographs that I'm most pleased with, that have perhaps the most integration time, so the longest exposures, where the signal to noise ratio is lowest and where I've really taken the time to edit and process them well, I look at them and I just don't get the same sort of tug at the heartstrings. There's no, for me, sense of adventure that I get. And I look at the photographs and rather than being reminded of, you know, a fantastic night on a beach in the middle of nowhere, um, you know, hearing the sounds of the birds and, you know, seeing the sun come up in the morning, um, I'm just reminded of all the immense frustrations that I've had in building this observatory, in trying to get this observatory watertight whilst also usable, um, whilst trying to get all this gear to talk to each other on the laptop, um, overcoming just technical glitches every night, and then the really sort of hard learning curve of editing and processing those images. So I'm just not getting the same level of enjoyment with this as I get being out under the stars at night. So that's a bit of a problem because this is taking up, you know, quite a bit of real estate in the garden. It's, um, you know, there's a reasonable amount of expense tied up in this kit. Um, and I'm not entirely sure at this stage whether I can justify either of those two things. So this whole enterprise has definitely not been without its challenges. Probably the biggest challenge I've had with the observatory has been um, ensuring that the roof can roll on and off smoothly without catching any of the walls, um, without having too big a gap between the walls and the roof that the rain can get in. Um, it used to be the case that the roof would keep snagging, that I'd have to keep lifting the roof up, and the roof's quite heavy. This is a big shed. Um, and unfortunately, the frame that I built on the inside here um, just doesn't have the strength to support the roof really rigidly, so it keeps sagging a bit. So I've had to lift the roof up so far that there really is too much gap, um, and often the rain will get in through that. Now, 
the kit's okay. Uh, so the rain just kind of comes down the walls a bit, drips onto the floor and ultimately drains away and evaporates. So the kit itself never gets touched by the rain. But coming in here in the middle of winter and seeing a wet floor or when it's really, really windy, it's pretty windy today, but if we had a really big storm, I'd be worried that that gap that I've had to produce in the roof uh, or between the roof and the walls um, enables the wind to get under it. I'd be terrified that this whole thing or the whole roof is going to go uh, flying off. That's probably been the biggest challenge that I've had. I've probably tried you know, two or three different times now to um, fix that problem. But really, I just don't have the capability to do it well. Working with this plastic shed is actually really difficult. Um, I, you know, I'm not particularly good at DIY. I can knock a few wood things together, but anything beyond that is, uh, um, is, is a bit challenging for me. Um, and I just have never come up with a solution to stop the roof from sagging. And so um, that for me has been a real limiting factor in, uh, in using this. So the other area, apart from the leaky roof that I've had frustrations, is in getting all of this kit to talk to each other. So um, at night when I'm imaging, I put the Astro modified DSLR on to the focuser here. Um, that's plumbed into the laptop using Astro photography tools. Um, I've got a guide camera here, which is plumbed into PHD2. Um, and then I've got the mount itself, uh, which uses um, EQ mod um, and I use Carte de Ciel um, and also Astro Photography tools to control the mount. Um, getting that set up initially was okay, but then a few months ago I started having just some infuriating guiding problems. Um, I kept getting feedback from the computer that uh, the mount was unable to make corrections properly in declination. Um, I tried everything. I looked, opened up the mount to check all the gears and stuff were okay. There was no sign of significant backlash. Um, the mount wasn't, you know, over, um, uh, wasn't overburdened. It was balanced properly. Um, I even added another counterweight to shorten the, uh, the counterweight bar. Um, none of these things seemed to make a difference. Eventually, I found some settings within PHD2, uh, which um, I played around with having looked all over the internet for solutions, and eventually that fixed the problem. That's just an example of some of the things that just drive you crazy if you can't sort them out. Clear nights in the UK are fairly few and far between, and to be spending them um, trying to fix technical issues and not actually imaging um, is just incredibly infuriating. And I think it's that scarcity of good, clear, dark nights in the UK uh, that made me think, I'm not sure I wanna be spending my time fighting software, fighting electronics, when I could be out relaxing, just enjoying nature under the night sky um, and taking some fantastic pictures um, along the way. So this may well be the last time I film from inside this observatory. Um, I'll let you know how the next three months goes and what I decide to do. Um, I have enormous respect for you guys who do deep sky imaging and persevere with it and deliver some outstandingly beautiful results. Deep sky imaging is a combination of immense technical ability, patience, persistence, but also incredible artistic ability in the editing and the processing and the rendering of those images. I have gained an enormous appreciation for just how hard it is. It's very easy on Twitter or Instagram just to flick through images and spend you know a couple of seconds looking at something and that doesn't even slightly do justice to the effort and the skill that goes into making those images. So um, if you're one of those guys, um, my hat's off to you. I'll carry on watching your content, Karen, enjoying your images on social media and on Stargazer's Lounge. What you will still see from me is taking you out with me into the landscape with the stars above my head, taking photographs of some fantastic locations with the beautiful night sky um, above it. You'll still see me doing that. You'll still be able to come along for that adventure with me. I love sharing that with you. Um, but for me, from inside of here, 
that adventure is probably coming to an end. So we'll see how the next three months go. Maybe that will be different. I suspect it won't. Um, but thanks very much for coming uh, along for the ride. Thank you very much for bearing with me as I sort of bear my soul about what this observatory means to me at the moment. Um, and look forward to seeing you on another video soon. Thanks for coming.